The following is a rebroadcast of the 1993 Tri-State Megabucks Doubles Tournament of Champions. Be sure to join Doug Brown and Dan Murphy on Saturday, October 9th for a brand new season of Stars and Strikes Doubles. Now at its new time, Saturdays at noon. The second annual Tri-State Megabucks Doubles Tournament of Champions kicked off last week, and it was the team of Chuck Godzik and Peter Flynn jumping out with four consecutive marks at the start of the match. A 49-pin lead after Game 1 proved to be too tough to overcome for Paul St. Pierre and Steve Reno. Godzik and Flynn finished with a 400 triple and earned their way into today's match against the fourth-seeded team of Jack Sanek and Brian McKinley. This is Week 2 of the Tri-State Megabucks Doubles Tournament of Champions. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Londonderry Bowling Center. This is Week 2 of the Stars and Strikes Doubles Tournament of Champions. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. Glad to have you with us. And uh, last week, a big week for Peter Flynn and Chuck Godzik, a 400, uh, almost breaking the record for Stars and Strikes doubles triple score, uh, falling one pin short, in fact. But uh, they got the big win, and now they're looking for number two. Yeah, as we say uh, with doubles, if you can get out of the gate real fast, and they did with four marks, and they just never look back. All right, let's meet our two teams for this week's second match in the Stars and Strikes doubles tournament of champions. First, our returning winners from last week in our number five seeded team from Manchester, New Hampshire, Chuck Godzik, and his partner from Bradford, Massachusetts, Peter Flynn. Okay, and Chuck uh, averaging 121, high single of 199. Peter Flynn averaging 134 and his high single 211. And last week, uh, Chuck and Peter combined for a 400 to beat Paul St. Pierre and Steve Reno. And so now they move on to face our number four seeded team. And this was kind of an interesting situation. We had a tie resulting from the uh, three game totals in the two series championship matches. Jack Sanek and Brian McKinley lost a one string roll off. So now they have to bowl the extra match. This is, it's critical at any time, but even more so in this series because there are more matches to roll. Well, you know, it could work the other way. If they have a tough match but able to squeak out a win, it may help them just loosen them up for the next match, but we'll, we'll see. All right, let's meet them uh, again. They are our fourth-seeded team from Quincy, Massachusetts, Jack Sanek, and from Hudson, New Hampshire, his partner, Brian McKinley. Okay, Jack averaging 125, high single 199, and Brian comes in averaging 121 and a high single of 192. And, of course, the winners will move on to uh, week three next week. The runners-up today will share fifth-place prize money of $200. We've got lots to come here on this hour on Stars and Strikes Doubles. The Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions continues, and we'll get it started right after these messages. Don't go away. All right, last week, if you missed it, Chuck Godzik and Peter Flynn with the big 400. By the way, the scores you see on the right are the uh, qualifying scores in the championship matches that brought these teams here. So third and fourth place decided by that one-string roll-off, that roll-off won by Bill Hart and Mark Arnold. So they get the number three spot, so they'll be here next week to face the winners of this match today. And then you see the teams that are coming in the weeks to come. Uh, Brian Fuller, Steve Vadney, Gary Carrington, Joe Ashline. That's the way it lines up here for our second Tri-State Megabucks Doubles Tournament of Champions. And we have a large crowd on hand for this match. Uh, week two and Peter Flynn to start it. And he starts it with two. <laughs> week two, start with two. Not quite what Peter had in mind. Half was to right. Ooh. Grab the out, Peter, grab the out. Looked like he uh, intended to play that on the inside. He was trying to make it that way, but a little too far to the right. And that's, that's what he was trying to do. <laughs> he didn't miss it by much, that second ball. A lot of bowlers would say, well, now I'm just going to get as many as I can. But Peters says, no, I'm going to go right after it again. Aggressive. And a fine ball to recover. And a quick nine drop. And just the four pin. Piece of wood in front. No problem. Spare in the second. Jack Sanek now to start for the team of Sanek and McKinley. Five, eight, and ten. Oh, 
No. And it's an eight box for Jack. Jack Sanek and Brian McKinley qualified for the tournament back on December 27th with a 381 to beat Bob Kelly and Bob Mazur. For both Jack and Brian, it's their first appearance in a Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. Peter looks at the four horsemen to the right. Piece of wood that may cost him this one if he splits the one and the three. But certainly uh, Jack and Brian uh, have been around on our shows a lot. Both with a lot of appearances. Chuck Godzik now working on that mark left by his partner Peter Flynn. It's a six drop. <laughs> Look better than that. The five, seven, nine, ten piece of wood angled toward him between the five and the nine. Wants to get as much of that as he can. And it'll be a nine. Last week for the team of Godzik and Flynn, 14 marks, 13 spares, one strike. And a 400. By the way, the uh, 13 spares for the team was a doubles tournament of champions record. Breaking the old record of 12 held by Mike Morrill and Jack Quinn from last year. One, two, nine, and ten. It was a piece of wood. Roll off, so he's got no help. He's going to have to do it all himself. That close. Forty-five through four. And now our fourth bowler to step up is Brian McKinley. Oh, nice pocket hit for Brian. Five and eight, piece of wood out in front. He's to the right of the red line, should have no problem. There it is, first mark for the team. Well, Brian, a fine bowler, of course, but uh, also a big fan of the game, and he's here quite a lot for our Stars and Strikes tapings when he has a chance. Brian right back in the pocket again, and this time the five pin. It's going to be the five pin by itself. Pretty good ball. He knocked down nine. He only left one other pin on the plate. That's one you can see in the right-hand channel. Pulls that one to the left, just missing the five. And again. So it's all even after four boxes. 45 apiece. Tri-State Megabucks presenting all the action here on Stars and Strikes Doubles in our Tournament of Champions. Just imagine being rich. Tri-State Megabucks. He was trying to imagine a strike right there. and <laughs> Didn't imagine quite hard enough. No. Had the pins dancing and he misses Ooh. a single. So turn around, fair play. Both teams missing single pins for spares. Well, I think one thing that might have been concerning uh, Chuck Godzik and Peter Flynn at the end of last week's match, Dan, is the fact that even though they won, and they won with a good score of 400, they weren't quite as sharp at the end of the match as they were at the beginning. And made a comment at the time last week when they got off to that quick start, not to get complacent, not to get too overconfident, to try and keep your focus and forget what the score is and That's just keep right. what you're supposed to be doing. And I think maybe they might have been a little concerned about that at the end of last week's show. No lead is safe. Go back to the match. I know um, 
Chuck Langlois was involved. I think, I uh, can't remember exactly the match, but there was a swing of over 100 pins. I remember right. there, one of those matches that you thought it was over early after seven boxes, but it can turn around in a hurry. Three and uh, two and five left for Jack Sanic. Jack from Quincy, Mass. Works as a division controller for State Street Bank, and Jack misses a spare leave. Jack does a lot of his bowling at the Wallex lanes in Waltham, Mass. There's a 10, so each team missing some spare opportunities here early. Yes, legitimate spare opportunities. No roadblocks in front, no dead wood that's going to hurt the shot. Just playing ordinary, missing the shots left and right. And let's see, the seven pin will stay up this time. Five, seven, piece of wood in front of the seven, but I believe he'll probably try to cut the five pin over. Remember the winners of this match will advance to next week's third week of the Tournament of Champions. And Bill Hart and Mark Arnold will be here for that match. And what an incredible role they have been on. Immediately prior to the start of the Tournament of Champions, two weeks ago, Bill and Mark completed a run of four wins. Neither, with, neither of them had ever been on the show before. They combined for four straight wins with some terrific scores, too, including their 381 that got them into the tournament. And they'll be here next week. Oh, nice, nice conversion there for the 10 box for Chuck Godzik. Cut the five into the 10. Watch this. <laughs> oh, and that's how to carry that momentum over as he strikes on lane 29. It's a matter if that ball is going to get up fast enough, breaking to the left, and he buries it right in the pocket for the strike. Brian McKinley for the seventh and eighth frames. Brian works for Purity Supermarkets in Plastow, New Hampshire. Brian and his wife Debbie live in Hudson. Does uh, most of his bowling at the Lita Lanes in Nashua and also right here in Londonderry. And Brian takes an eight. Just one pin the difference right now through seven, but that strike up in the eighth for Godzik and Flynn. Good looking ball. Tripped out the seven pin. Leaves himself the 6'10", and he has a choice. Well, one of the choices just disappeared. Now he's got just the wood. <laughs> Which is not a bad choice to have. <laughs> Spare in the eighth. Two marks for each team. Peter Flynn on the strike. And yes double. for the double. Just a matter of would the four pin go or not. Double strike. And this is obviously a real big ball. A little heavy on the head pin. Looked better than what he ended up with anyways. Half dozen. Two, four, seven on the left with a 10 pin. For the spare. Yes. 128 with a ball to come. Out of nowhere. A late flurry here. Yeah, 72 after 7, a 102 clip, and going to be well above that now. Just 5 on the mark, 133, but 61 pins in the last three frames. And Jack Sanic has a spare working the eighth. Going to try to do something similar. 
Oh, and he has a nice fill, a nine drop, leaving the four. But he can't clear the four. There's a mark in the ninth. Well, if Jack were to get a big fill and another mark, he might be able to successfully counterbalance that double strike. At least pull this thing close. Going into game two. Let's see, pretty good looking ball again, eight. It gives him 110. He won't have the lead, but he can be awfully close. With a spare? No. Ooh. Slides by. So it'll be a double digit lead for Chuck Godzik and Peter Flynn after one game. But not the size lead they had last week after one game when they led by 49. This week their lead will be 13. 133 for Godzik and Flynn, 120 for Sanic and McKinley. We're back with game two in a minute. Let's see if the 13 pin lead is lucky or not. <laughs> <laughs> We're starting the second game. The opposite team starts. That would be Brian McKinley. On lane 30 and he's right through the middle. Oh, nice cut shot. Maybe he's thinking he should have played it that way the first time. <laughs> that for the 10. Brian overall making his 15th appearance here on Stars and Strikes. Jack Sanic, his partner, making his 16th appearance. I say, a lot of experience uh, on this team. Again, flushing the head pin this time to spread eagle. Hey, Brian's had to work hard these two frames, hasn't he? That's for sure. He's going to go back and say, come on, partner, I need some help. <laughs> Chuck Godzik will lead it off for our leaders. That was just the second 400 triple in doubles tournament of champions play last week. The other one was last year, 401 for Joe Ashline and Steve Vadney. Not quite for Chuck. Everything but the five, and you can see the five is still rocking. I have a feeling that sometime before the end of this series, that 401 will be a distant memory. I think you might be right. Some heavy hitters all the way through. Of course, we talked about the great story of Bill Hart and Mark Arnold have been writing here. Uh, they'll be here next week as our number three seeds. The following week, a very interesting team. Brian Fuller and Steve Vadney. Steve Vadney has been here more than any other bowler. As Chuck Godzik gets robbed on the spare. Steve has been here more than any other bowler, but this is uh, only the second time that he's qualified for a tournament of champions. Of course, last year he was with Joe Ashline to win this event. And his partner, Brian Fuller, has never lost <laughs> on Stars of Strikes. He's 5-0. Big ball by Jack Sanic, everything but the 10. No. And the 10. Our participating sponsors for the Stars and Strikes Doubles Tournament of Champions. 
Our friends at Somerville Lumber get it right the first time at any Somerville Lumber location. Gagnon's Furniture, Hudson, New Hampshire. For all your furniture and flooring needs, visit Gagnon's Furniture. And Mattress Cloud of Manchester, Salem, and Nashua, your discount bedding store, Mattress Cloud. And two opens for Jack Sanic. Jack taking care of some house cleaning for Peter Flynn on lane 29. Peter Flynn, the only left-handed bowler in this year's tournament. He stole a little Monty Thunder. I was going to say, Peter is the best left-hander we have in the entire tournament. <laughs> and a 10 box for Peter. So we're still looking for our first mark from either team this second game. Peter's team, Peter and Chuck Godzik, still leading by 15. Came in leading by 13 and increased it by two more. Well, you can't really call this a spare leave, but there is a piece of wood in front. And there is a reset button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if there's a way, Peter will find one. Four, five, seven, piece of wood in front of the five, but give that a no. try, but this was really nothing there. And we'll take a break. Pretty good match going. Neither team able to really take advantage in this second game so far, but Godzik and Flynn still with the lead now by 16. We'll return in a minute. Back we are, week number two, Stars and Strikes Doubles Tournament of Champions. So glad you've made us part of your day. Three more weeks, we'll have all the action for you here on the wins as the Tournament of Champions roll on. Next Sunday at noon, week three. First in singles, then at one o'clock here in doubles. Just barely catching the head pin. Wanted a little more of the head pin for the 9 and 10. And again, we're still waiting for our first mark of the second game. And then, of course, don't forget, over the summer, after the Tournament of Champions is concluded in three more weeks, we'll have some of our best shows from the past season all during the summer for you here on the Winds. And then next fall... God willing, it's our 10th season. Wow. And again, no marks. 54 through 6. Three marks for the team of Sanic and McKinley, four marks for Godzik and Flynn, all of them in the first game. But now a nine drop for Chuck Godzik. And you're gonna have to watch the wood. Yes. That'll give him 48 through five, plus the bonus ball. I think if there was any danger with that shot, Dan, it was off to the right. Right. Chuck made sure that he was well to the left. Turn that one over a little bit. Half dozen, 54 through five. No. 
Six pin is still there. Ten bucks. And they've added ten more to the lead in this second game. It's now 23. Jack Sanek. And Jack correctly called that one as he put two fingers up. Three through seven. Well, that's well, a break there with this ten pin going down. <laughs> now let's see what we can do with this wood. Seven, eight left. Five pieces of wood on the plate. Six of the eight pins that Jack knocked down are still in view. <laughs> <laughs> that close. Nope. I'm not sure about That's that nine. one. Yeah, it looked like a nine. Peter Flynn. Oh, big pocket hit. And yes, taps out the 10 pin. That piece of wood in the channel came up to tap out the 10. Watch it. Right there. <laughs> Just nudging it enough to knock the 10 pin over. Two and seven left for Peter. Trying to go spare on strike and increasing the lead. Yes. Oh, yeah, nice. yeah, what a shot. What a shot on the two seven. Well, on the inside, ball caroms off the two pin into the seven. And all of a sudden that lead is getting sizable again, as it did last week for Godzik and Flynn. Jack Sanek and Brian McKinley have not been able to put a mark up in this game. And I don't like the looks of that piece of wood in between the two and the four either. Nice play Whoa. on the outside. That's the correct way of doing that. Got the benefit of all the wood because he turned it. A much needed spare. The fourth mark of the match for Brian and Jack. All spares for them. Godzik and Flynn have three strikes already, including a double. Still going to be less than 100, though, for the game. A 9 and 96. And a two-game total of 216 for Sanek and McKinley. Chuck Godzik on a spare. Eight. Eight in the five, seven. Piece of wood next to the five. Going to try to shoot at the red line on the piece of wood. Hope he can jump the pin over. No, it's on the inside. This lead is going to be at least 30. Maybe more. Could be over 40 with a mark. Four horsemen right, minus the 10 pin. And the seven. One horse got, got loose. <laughs> <laughs> He's on the other side. <laughs> the one, three, six, and seven, no. So as they did last week, Chuck Godzik and Peter Flynn will have a rather sizable lead going into the third and final game, 120 and a 253. So the lead is 37 with one game to go. Stars and Strikes doubles. Tournament of Champions action continues in a minute.
Peter Flynn to start game three, his team with the lead. And the quest for three in a row. Half Mr. left. This is where he started off the uh, the match with. I have wished her right, I should say. Well, you really can't expect, uh, of course, Peter and Chuck had that big win last week, looking for two in a row here today, but you can't really expect that you're going to have a, a huge win like that all the time, but... They might be headed for one if Jack and Brian don't catch fire here in game three. Nice 10 for Peter. Yeah, you see that 10 box using the wood effectively for the seven. 37 pins. You gotta figure you, you, you've got to throw about a 140 game and hope they have a subpar game as Jack Sanek and Brian McKinley just had at 96. And no, Peter doesn't get the mark. So that does leave an opening. Jack Sanek will be leading off for the team of Sanek and McKinley in this third game. And certainly the potential is there with Jack Sanek and Ryan McKinley to throw a big, a big string this final one. $200 is the prize money to our runner-up team today. Winners, of course, move on to face... Bill Hart and Mark Arnold next week. What a story they have been. And the spare. Just ask Jack Sanek and Brian McKinley about uh, Bill Hart and Mark Arnold. Uh, <laughs> they got smoked in the uh, one game roll off. Uh, Bill and Mark put 56 pins on the board in the last three boxes to get a 148 to claim the number three seed, but how about this start for Jack Sanek? Well, there goes 10 pins of that lead very quickly. And always the potential of throwing a double. A double now, this match is just about even. Chuck Godzik. Bill Hart and Mark Arnold rolled a 148 to win that one game roll off over Jack Sanek and Brian McKinley who had a 102. That's why Jack and Brian are here this week and Bill and Mark aren't here until next week. Chuck Godzik looking for a spare leave to happen and well at first I thought he wanted the three pin to stay up but now you know, he's got a couple pieces of wood one straight across another one angled at him in the back Let's see no and they will be open first four well you talked about the possibility of a double strike uh, even if Brian McKinley can get up there and Add another mark in his next two. It'll make things a lot tighter. That's a 10 for Chuck. He took a little extra time with it. Well, you alluded to it last week where they kind of come up flat that third game. It was a decent game, but they weren't as sharp as they were the first two. Starting out that way this week. Oh, Brian on a strike. Got to be careful for this ball now. This is the important one. Seven fill on the strike. So they've cut 17 off the lead. It's down to 20. Mark here, make things real interesting. Certainly will. Well, you'll have a shot at one, the 6-10. He's got to try to play this just like the wood wasn't there. Just drive the ball straight back through the 6 and then the 10. That's it. We'll take a break. The team of Brian McKinley and Jack Sanek making a run here in Game 3. We'll be back with more in a minute.
Peter Flynn. His team in the lead, but they're in a bit of a dry spell here. Trying to, trying to throw a little water on the fire that's brewing on the other side of the score sheet. 56 through 4 for Jack Senek and Brian McKinley, plus the bonus ball coming. Oh, there's a big spare right there, and, and Peter liked that one a lot. And not an easy one. Sleeper in the back, the 8-pin, needs some help off the sidewall with the head pin for the spare. Just Ooh. catching the head pin. This may be a nine, Phil. Let's see. Nope, eight. No, but worse than that, the wood turned a little bit for him. Not for him, against him. <laughs> it had a good angle when it rested against the two pin. Then it had a chance to move. Wow. Looked like something hit the ten pin coming down, but did not take it out. Nine box. And the call goes out to Jack Sanic now. <laughs> Remember, he's working on a mark left by his partner. And he's oh. off the head pin with a half Worcester. That, combined with the fact that they're now opposite a mark, is going to give up some pins here. And Jack takes a six box. And all of a sudden, the lead is back to 30. Off the head pin again, but at least a shot to make something happen here on the spare. One, two, seven, and nine. Piece of wood in front of the seven. No. And the 10. So the lead is 29 with four boxes to go. One rotation left, Chuck Godzik. And Chuck lost that one off to the left. 29 pins, that's translate into four marks. Boy, it looked like Chuck had that for a spare. One, there was a collision between two pins and... Stopped it. Yeah. Yeah. Sit down, Charlie. Nine box. Four hundred last week for Godzik and Flynn. They had to work a little harder this week. Two, five, and seven. Very makeable spare. Wood in between the two and the five. This could be a backbreaker right here. Oh, he's gone way left. So there's still some light. The team of Jack Sanek and Brian McKinley. And a nine box. So two opens. Well, it's pretty much got to be two marks here for Brian McKinley in some form or another because they trail by 29. Now he's on the head pin, but right through the heart. Doesn't want a bad frame. Still probably do it with three marks, but they would need some help from Peter Flynn in the form of a bad, bad box. Or Jack's gonna have to throw strikes. Brian doesn't put a mark up here in the eighth. There's a chance they could get closed out either way. And half Worcester left. Boy, you wonder sometimes what makes it all turn. Jack Sanek and Brian McKinley had three solid marks in the uh, first four boxes of this third game. They had cut the lead under 20. And then the next thing you know, they're back in the soup again. Two boxes to go now. And a 30-pin lead for Peter Flynn. Which means if he gets 
31 pins. He will close them out. All over that, Peter. All over that. Of course, you'd need two marks for 31 pins. Shooting at the 10 pin first. Conversion for the spare. The big fill. Two four left. Trying to finish with two marks in a row. Well, mathematically, it's still possible for Jack Sanic. It'll have to be strikes, though, and a lot of them. 112, 365 for Godzik and Flynn. That means that Jack Sanic is going to have to get a 150 up on the board. And now it's in the books. Chuck Godzik and Peter Flynn have made it two in a row. A spare in the ninth for Jack Sanic. Just pushes the wood back into the cluster of four pins, and, and there's a lead for you. Three, five, seven, and nine. Now Jack and Brian will win this battle, but not the it. war. And how about that shot? They'll win this battle, but not the war. Terrific shot by Jack Sanic. Certainly worth another look. 117 plus a ball. And uh, Jack will have to reset as he was trying to clear out a piece of wood. That's just been the kind of day it is. <laughs> Ironically, uh, Jack and Brian now with nine marks in the match, five of them here in the third game. But they weren't quite able to put a couple more up there early enough to make it a threat. And <laughs> Boy, all the breaks coming now. There's an eight drop and a 125, a 331 for the team of Sanic and McKinley. It's win number two in a row for Godzik and Flynn. Make it 341 for Sanic and McKinley. We'll be back to talk to the bowlers and set you up for next week right after these words. Back here at the Londonderry Bowling Center, Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy who will rejoin me shortly. Week two of the Stars and Strikes Doubles Tournament of Champions in the books. And let's call up our runner-up team. A round of applause for Brian McKinley and Jack Sanic. Fifth place prize money. You guys will share $200. And, uh, well, there was uh, an opportunity at least uh, in the third uh, and in the second game, too, to, to try and close the lead, but just not enough time to get back in it, I guess. Just didn't bowl well enough. I mean, yeah. we had our chances. I mean, mm -hmm. I got up there and, you know, two, two fill and a six box just, you know, takes a little hot out of you, too. And, uh, you know, what can you do? We can't bowl like that and expect to win. These uh, these guys, uh, Chuck and Peter, have been making a habit of getting out to the, the big lead, too, and it's I, I guess it's better to, to go in front if you have a choice in a short match. Well, Peter got that big double in the first game, yep. and it was it was a tough struggle from there, and we just couldn't catch. We could bowl 10 more strings to not catch up to them. <laughs> Well, we don't have time for that, guys, so sorry, but, uh, but thanks very much, and congratulations uh, for making it here, and uh, again, enjoy the, uh, the prize money, and we'll hope to see you again in the fall. Hope so. All right, Jack, thanks very much, Brian. We appreciate it. And uh, Peter and Chuck are already on the way. They know what's coming up next. They know the drill at this point. Right. Peter and Chuck, congratulations again. Uh, kind of a similar match, uh, though, to last week, and not the big score for you guys, not as big as last week, but yet a little drop-off in the second game, a chance to let them back in, but yeah. they weren't able to do it on you. Yeah, we got out to the front, and uh, that was... Uh, that <laughs> just was just get the early lead and hang on, right? <laughs> <laughs> hang on or run away or do whatever you got to do to win, you know? 
Uh, I got to put my two cents worth in for my sponsor, Grandpa's Printing and Lawrence. How's that? All right. Okay. We, we got it in. It puts a lot of my bills. So All right. Very good. And uh, as far as footing the bills, you guys now move up the ladder, and uh, it'll be week three next week, and you know you have uh, Bill Hart and Mark, uh, rather, uh, right, Bill Hart and Mark Arnold coming in, and they've been uh, writing a terrific story here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. They've been very hot and uh, coming in, and now they're going to be your next opponent. Uh, quick thoughts about that match? Well, we can get out to the start again and uh, <laughs> see, 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 see if we can bowl the second and third string this time. So you, you'd take four or five marks in a row at the beginning again, right? Oh, you bet. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. Congratulations, and we'll see you next week. Peter and uh, Peter Flynn and Chuck Godzik, two in a row. And here's the way it sets up for next week. Week three, remember, of five here on the Tournament of Champions. And uh, it'll be Chuck Godzik and Peter Flynn, our number five seeds, coming back to try and make it three in a row. And Bill Hart and Mark Arnold, uh, if uh, folks have been with us here at the end of the season here on Stars and Strikes Doubles, you know what they did. They won four in a row just to get here. And, uh, and now they've got to be in a position to win three in a row to win it again. But it's certainly an interesting story to, to watch for, especially with these guys bowling well. well. They have to be the Cinderella team. If you took mm -hmm. all the names and put them in front of people, uh, those are least famous, if you mm -hmm. want to call them famous. But they certainly uh, know who they are if they've been watching the show the last few weeks. Yeah, Bill and Mark are getting famous. <laughs> uh, absolutely. <laughs> in a big hurry. All right, we'll be back next week. Remember, two full hours starting Sunday at 12 noon here on the Winds. It'll be week three of the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. We'll hope you'll be able to join us. In the meantime, for Dan Murphy and the whole Winds crew, I'm Doug Brown. Have a good weekend, everybody.